I'm Sharky Zartman. Welcome to the CBVA Hall of Fame. I grew up in Manhattan Beach and we always used to go to the beach. That was our favorite part of, as a family. And um, I started seeing these people playing this really fun game. And they were, you know, just yelling and screaming and having a good time. And I thought, I want to do that. And so, um, as, as early as I can remember, um, once my parents would let me go out by myself, I would run down 15th Street, that's where we lived, and go along the beach. And I just went to each court. And I was, um, by then, I was probably about. Uh, 11, 12, when I built up the courage to do it and when I could get out. And I just went from court to court and asked if I could play. And you know, some people said, no, get out of here, you little wimp. And other people said, yeah, you know. And so, um, and I did that up and down the beaches of Manhattan and up to Hermosa. And that's what I did most of the summer as a teenager growing up whenever I could. I just went out and played because I loved it. And, um, you know, played a little bit of indoors. Um, you know, at, at the school and indoors at the high school, but it was never the same. It was never the same. You know, the beach was just so much fun, and um, you just you just felt amazing when you played it, and you were outside, and you know, you met lots of friends, and um, you know, it was a lifestyle sport. I mean, it's just there there's there was nothing like it. I just fell madly in love with it. Uh, I would say my biggest inspiration in the sport was Jean Brudicardi. And Jean, um, I met her, uh, I built up enough courage eventually to go down to Santa Monica where I heard, you know, all the really good players were. And I remember going down there and it was really intimidating because, you know, you know they had not only all the top women players but all the top guy players. And you walk down there and I, I was by myself and I'm just sitting there going, hey, can I have Nick's game? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that you didn't do that down there. And so I asked if I could play, and you know, they just told me to get lost. And I remember Jean, you know, just, um, you know, she just kind of looked over at me, and then, um, you know, she said, why don't we let her play? And so I was just so amazed that she let me on the court, and um, so amazed at how good she was and how nice she was, because a lot of the people that I saw play at that time were rather rude. <laughs> I think they were good, they were energetic, but you know, I mean, they had their little clicks and you know, stuff. And, um, but she was, you know, she let me on the court. Um, she would tell me the things I needed to work on. And, um, and so I just kept going down, going down. And um, eventually I got to play in a tournament with her husband, Steno Brunicardi, um, mixed doubles. And, um, you know, so I would say she was my biggest inspiration. And my second biggest inspiration was Mary Jo Pepler. Um, I got a chance to play with her. Um, she was one of the top women in, indoors and on the beach for a while. And then she, she played with Mary Perry, and then she kind of retired from the beach. And I was on the national indoor team. And after we were done, I said, hey, why don't we get back out on the beach? And um, she. She is so smart. I mean, she's one of these indoor players that can go out on the beach and can really rip. And so those, those are the two that I say most inspirational players for me. Oh, well, gosh, I played before ratings. <laughs> There are no such thing as ratings for women. I mean, I'm, the only tournament that we had that was really the big tournament was the John Shaw Manhattan Beach Open. And, um, you know, so women didn't have that many tournaments. And um, we started getting a few more tournaments, um, Marine Street, um, <laughs> um, you know, Santa Monica. Um, but there weren't any ratings. And so if you were good, you did well in these tournaments. If you were bad, you didn't do well. And it wasn't until I, played five years on the WPVA, you know, our first pro, um, you know, organization, and then ret retired from that. I came back and I played a um, CBVA tournament, and I played with one of my students, um, Terry Ligi, and that's the first rating I got, and it was a triple A. We got second, and so that's the first rating I ever got. <laughs> I didn't know they were that important when I was growing up, and so anyway, um, yeah, so that was it. 
Oh gosh, you know, <laughs> Kathy Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Gregory was, I think, just about everyone's toughest opponent. And it wasn't because, um, well, she, she's a great player. I mean, obviously, she knows her stuff. But you, it, when you walked on a court with her, you had to not only be on your game, but you had to have your mind in place because she could just take you out of your game in a second. And I remember the first time I played against her, and she, she'd be going, what's the score? And somebody would go, it's 11 to one. And she'd go, how'd they get one? You know? <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my God. But she was an inspiration to me because I thought one of these days, I am going to get good enough to beat her. And that happened once, and I'll never forget it. <laughs> And so, yeah, she was she was probably the toughest I've ever played against. I mean, um, Nino was also very tough, but Nino was very gracious. You know, I mean, she she was very tough on the court. She'd beat you up, but afterwards, I mean, she she was really nice. <laughs> so, but I love Kathy because she's unique. And, you know, she was always herself. She never pretended to be anything other than what she was. I remember one time somebody dinked a ball. And, and she ran and got it, and she's yelling at the time, and she, and she goes, maybe when I'm 50, I won't be able to get that. And, and she would harass the crowd, and you know, just, I mean, it was, she, she was hilarious. And so, yeah, she's the one. <laughs>
you know, I mean, I wasn't in the best of shape, but I think I had a really different perspective. I mean, having a baby and being part of a family, I mean, every time I used to go out on the court, it was win or die. And, um, but I got distracted easily. But when, you're, when you've had a baby, when you've gone through childbirth, when you have a little one-year-old watching you on the side, everything in, falls into place. And for the first time, I really felt that I could concentrate. And none of her, none of her antics bothered me. And it was so cool, because that's the first time I won any money. And, um, and so that was, that was my big win. Yes, um, advice for recreational players, number one is the most important thing that you can do if you want to be good is play as much as you can. And it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it doesn't matter who you play with, just play as much as you can. Um, all the old players did that. They would play all day long, they would, as, you know, from, from morning to night. There were no trainers back then, okay? And I think a lot of times people think nowadays that in order to be good in the sport, they have to get a trainer and they have to pay a bunch of money, you know, to that trainer and then they'll be good. Well, you know what, sometimes, you know, trainers help and sometimes they don't. There are a lot of people out there that see, you know, that there's money to be made and they'll go buy a bunch of beach balls and say they're a beach volleyball trainer. Well, maybe they've had experience indoors, but um, you know what? I mean, that's not beach volleyball. And so, you know, check the credentials if you are going to go with a trainer. And the last thing is have fun. This is not a job. Yes, I would like to get something off my chest. I got so mad when they shortened the court, lightened the ball, and started playing this rally score. What is up with that? I mean, all the people that played, you know, back when, you had to be in great shape to win a tournament. I mean, you know, some of these games went on for hours. I remember some of the tournaments that the cars would put their headlights on so we could finish a tournament. And um, now the game is over before you break a sweat. And also, you know, I mean, you don't even have to be able to move. I remember when I went out there, it, it was crowded with another person out there. And so, and what they did, I know it was for TV, I know it was for marketing, and I know all that. But what they did was they took away the heart of the sport, which is you have to be in tremendous shape. You have to be able to guts it out. And all the people that played back then, no. I mean, take a look at some of the people that played. Take a look at their bodies in the pictures. Take a look at Von Hagen, you know? I mean, you had to be in that kind of condition in order to play that many games, those long games, and be successful. And so, yeah, that really made me mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs>